There you are. Oh, is it good to see you. I wasn't sure if you'd find me. I'm John Zadar, and this is February 17th. It is Thursday. You're watching On Top and Hot at my new YouTube channel, Stocks, with an S at the end, Wizard. So here on On Top and Hot, I like to just share with you stocks I find that got something going for them, potential, running, whatever it is. And today I found a few, and it wasn't easy. It was a hard day, you probably noticed. Nonetheless, I got a few here that may surprise you. So come along, and I'll show you what I found. You knew this is where it was all going to begin, didn't you? Of course you did. The otcmarkets.com website. Why go anywhere else looking for information? This is the only site I found where FINRA and the SEC update OTC stock information every single day. That means it's never outdated. It's always current. Why search for information when you know where it's at? Make life easy. Come to otcmarkets.com. So we're going to start this off by looking at INTK, Industrial Nanotech, Inc. They finished the day just under five cents, just over four cents, 0 0.0403, 33% up today. They're on the pink tier and current. They've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. We like to see these green ticks. I don't know exactly what the OTC market is validating and verifying behind the scenes, but whatever it is, it's all coming up green. So that's good with me. I like to see these. So what does this company do? Well, basically, they develop sustainable nanotechnology-based solutions. They create products. They like to say, we produce materials that work for you, increasing productivity and efficiency. It's not just talk. It's not just theory. It's amazing technologies. And some of their stuff is pretty cool, I got to say. The company's products are sold through a global network of distributors. They've had that for years. And speaking of years, they haven't been saying much for quite a while. We just had news here recently, and it got the stock churning and burning again. What was the relative volume today? Well, she normally does 14 and a half million shares a day. Not too bad. Get back up there. But today she did 63 million. So you're looking at roughly 400% increase. Not bad. So the news means something. What is the share structure? Oh, wish I could say not bad for that. 1.3 billion, folks. It's a ton of shares, maybe a ton and a half. And her financials. We got nothing here annually since 2018. Looking at quarterly? No, nothing there either. Now that's interesting because normally if a company's not making money and everything's kosher with it, they were just waiting for changes, you see the word shell over here. If they're supposed to be making money and not reporting it, it says shell risk. We don't see either one of those. Now that could be because of the most recent news. When I read it, it definitely tells you that they're into the money. It's either happening now or it's just around the corner. And maybe that's why. So speaking about the news, let's go take a look at it. Now I told you they haven't had news for a while. 2016 to 2021 big gap. We see back here in 2016, they had a deal with concrete roof tile manufacturer in Middle East, and they had some order with China. So you can see they're definitely globally working and they were into unique products back then. Then you come all the way up here into 2021. We have a shareholder letter here, but this one actually says a lot more. It catches us up with what's going on. Uh, then they got themselves a digital marketing agency to help them promote more promotion. Then they got their first deal over in the EU for one of their new products, just under a million bucks. Then there is the letter for a stock dividend, which the dividend is for people who have hung around for the last four years, not for us getting in now. And then they talk about this new product they have for railroad tank cars. And I want to touch on to the little bit of information in each one of these. So this is the updated shareholder letter, if you will. This came out December 21st of last year. Now this is just bulleted, so it's really good for us. The company expects sales of Energy Protect to Italy under the Super Bonus 110 program to begin the first quarter of 2022. The company's distributor in Italy anticipates that sales could grow to $19 million annually. So there's one product, $19 million. Number two, the company expects sales of energy protect for the EU and anticipates sales could grow to $45 million by the end of 2022. So that's 19 and 45, so what, you're at 64 million. 
Number three, the company expects sales of their new product, Talking Paint. The company intends to capture 15% of the potential market by end of 2022. I'm not sure how big the market is they're talking about, but 15% of any market is a huge chunk, which could produce sales of $30 million. So now we're at $94 million. The company has plans to establish a manufacturing facility in South Carolina for their new self-reporting insulation for pipes. The company anticipates sales to begin the second quarter of this year. And the last bullet, the company is preparing for uplisting to more senior exchanges, including having the PCAOB audited financials for 21 and 2020. The company confirms there is no plan for a reverse split, and the company remains on the OTC markets. So, We've got a lot of potential income here. They've actually mentioned a couple products which we haven't looked at yet. You'll get some more news on that. Um, and you can see that they have expanded their building facilities in the United States and they're working out of the country. This next news press came out January 6th. Industrial Nanotech Inc. announces stock dividend to current shareholders and they go into detail here about how they're going to break it down and do it and that it is for the current shareholders those people that have hung around since 2016 till now they're rewarding them so it really doesn't have anything to do with us but they did have some other pertinent information in here they tell us that the company is obviously experiencing explosive growth I would say so with 100 million sitting on the table. It is also obvious that we need to add resources to our team in order to fully capitalize on the announced opportunities as well as additional deals we will be announcing in the next few months and upcoming quarters. Oh boy, more goodies, more acquisitions and deals. They go on to tell us that we need to expand our U.S. office and warehouse space, establish a fully staffed office and warehouse facility in the EU, and ramp up production of our revolutionary new product, Talking Paint. It's the second time we've heard about talking paint. So you can see they are expanding in the US, they're expanding in the EU, they are getting business in a lot of different places and talking paint is one of their new products. So let me show you what this talking paint is. So we're over here at talkingpaint.com. This is a clear paint that goes into your paint and whenever it gets hot, it turns red, comes right through the paint, just like this, so that you can see when things are heating up without having to touch them, without them having to explode. And down here, they've got a video, which does a pretty good job of showing you. I can jump top. into it right there. So you've got your gray doors. They're all painted gray. You have these in every building, right? Gray doors. When a fire starts and you're running through the smoke, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's hot or not. How do you know that door is safe to go through? Well, they use this paint and if there's a fire on the other side of the door, it turns red. You get words, you get whatever you need to come up and you can see it. That is a great indicator. It's a great product. And it's not that novel because I've actually got a coffee pot that does that. It's black, but when it gets hot, it turns red. And if I only put half water in it, the top half stays black and the bottom half goes red. And the last piece of news we're taking a look at for another new product that they have, Industrial Nanotech Inc. announces expansion into railroad tank car insulation. Yeah, they got to insulate the inside so they don't get too hot and blow up with all that stuff they're carrying in those tankers, right? Today, Industrial Nanotech announced that the company has reached an agreement with a railroad tank car owner to provide thermal insulation for the tank cars they own and operate. They will also be the exclusive distributor to the railroad tank car industry globally. Additional details on the new partner will be disclosed in an upcoming joint press release. Cool, more catalysts. The initial focus will be on 9,300 cars. There are approximately half a million tank cars in the US. The revenue to the company per tank car is approximately $35,000. Multiply that out, you're up, you know, $300 million is what you're talking about. It's another huge chunk of money. By replacing the existing insulation with a thinner and lighter insulation, we increase the volume and the weight available for product carried per tank car with no increase to cost per mile of transport distance. For this industry, our product will pay for itself in weeks. So this is going to be a very tempting product for railroad uh, companies. So you see they've got a lot of different products. They've got paint that 
disperses heat off of the house that e energy protect they have the heated paint which turns colors when it gets hot and then they got this nanotech thermal insulation which obviously keeps heat away all their nanotech products seem to work with heat well let's see if that chart heated up today and if it's got any more fire to blaze on us so now we're over here at thinkorswim this is a free trading platform so if you're tired of paying for the one you got or don't even have one go over to td ameritrade sign up for a free account no money necessary you don't even actually have to trade with them just keep your account open and you can use thinkorswim like i do so this is intk that is a four hour six month chart remember she had no news until september of 2021 from 2016 so she was probably doing a lot of that all the way back and that there is that news press boom first time in years people were excited you got about a 250 percent jump off this then she fell back down like normal stayed on that 200 and then hit a low bubble here and look at the launch Look at the launch off of that low bubble. I mean, she brought a whole new high to the game with, with that low bubble. Don't know why this happened this way, but there it is. She lifted her 200 haul and her 50 day right up here. It has pulled that price up well. And now she's had four days of continual climbing. Let's come on down to the five day, five minutes. So she was flat, right? She hit a low bubble here of about a penny and a half. And from that point, she has been climbing. Just hasn't stopped. One, two, three, four. She's got some little dribbles in there. But it looks to me, the yellow line here is my 50-day SMA. You can see that once she took off, she started to respect that 50. That's what she would hit. And she bounced off and she would just come under it a little and back up. So it is like the 50 there again. We got to hit almost. So she's respecting the 50 and pulling away from the 200. Now, this is very interesting because you got the MACD falling down and you got the price going up with the RSI just sitting there in the middle. So right now, she's actually looking good for more gains, folks. She is looking good. And let's face it, we're talking about 300 million for the tankers, 300 million. And there was another 100 million on all their other products. So there's 400 million that they're looking towards after making no money. There was nothing on the books. What is that worth? Well, it's worth four days gain so far. So this could drop. The market sentiment is beating the heck out of a lot of good companies. There's been a lot of good companies that have fallen in price that really should not be as low as they are. It's a buyer's market right now, folks. But this one is looking strong. I mean, she's bouncing like she does, but it doesn't look like she's gonna fall. She's still above that 50 and everything looks nice. Lots of volume at the end of the day. She does look like she's falling on this end, but I'm looking at this one year down the road. One year down the road, we're not looking for a bounce. When they say they're making no money and they're coming out to start making hundreds of millions of dollars, all you got to start doing is waiting for the quarterly reports. Every three months, they'll bring one out that says how much money they're making and this thing will bounce. So if anything, you may not want to buy everything right now if you like that concept. You get a small 20% hold now. You know how much you're going to buy. You get some of it now because there's going to be bad days. Of course there is. In a year's time, there's going to be dips and you can catch those dips and buy another 20% at a better price than you bought today and you end up with a much better average price. And when this starts to climb, you've got a good price to make some good profits on. Let's go take a look at another stock now. This stock's ticker is QEDN. This is QED Connect. It could be QED Connect, but I think it's QED. They finished the day at 0024 with 20% gains. The two are on the pink tier in current. They've got all their green ticks over there, so they look good. We are told that they are a shell risk. They're supposed to be making money. They're supposed to be reporting it, but they're not. Now, we could check and we're going to, just not yet, but the fact of the matter is I read the news and they seem to be on the cusp, if not already, into making money. They've got products and things are happening, so that's a little curious to me. So what does this company do? 
Well, this company has got some savvy relationships with other companies that make what they do possible. First, they're working with this Green Mind Solutions company. They came up with an idea years ago to help Columbia, to help them plant legal plants so they could actually have income from crops they could sell in the open market. And they started working with Sachi Inchi Seeds. These have omega-3, 6, and 9, complete vegan protein, and all nine essential amino acids. But you have to process them properly or they taste really bad and they can be dangerous to you. Yeah. And this company is saying they're the only company in the world that's figured it out. That can process them so that they're safe and they're tasty. And they have created uh, three different things. They have tasty snacks, powders, and beverages. Now, this is something that they are spreading around the world and they're getting a lot of attention for it. And they just had news. So, what sort of relative volume has this company had here recently? Well, they normally do about six and a half million shares a day. Today, they did 30 million. So you're looking again at about 400% increase. What is their share structure? Oh, for bloody sakes, 2.1 billion shares. Sorry, folks, what happened to the days I used to bring you low float stocks? Wow. All right, now we'll take a look at those financials. They say that she's a shell risk. We got nothing there. And under quarterly, absolutely zip. So there is nothing going on here. And I don't believe we have any disclosures. Not since 2015 and their current financials. So that's really all we got except the news. So when we look at the news here, we're all the way back here. Now that's all the news we got. You're seeing it all right there. We got 2021 up here at the top. Nothing even for 2022. Just something in December. And it goes back to 2018 where they were talking about mining. Not crypto. No, digging in the earth mining. They were in the mining companies back then. And then there was a turn here out of the clear blue in 2018. This is when they say they're launching their brand snacks. Sanchez and Sancha Powder. And then there's a big silent gap again until 2021 and now they're saying they have a beverage so they've obviously been doing things they're just not letting us in on what they're doing and we're going to take a look at this piece of news here to get some information because they have got deals now with nestle and juan valdez you know the coffee guy and other clients as well and then we've got two other pieces of news here that each have something to tell us. So let's take a look at that first piece of news. GM Sachi Inchi Beverage, QEDN and GEGI. Now this is something I haven't really done a lot of investigating in, but GEGI is also selling this beverage. And there's some connection here. If you look in that news we just looked at, some of that news is about GEGI. Now they didn't go up today. Their price uh, I think is less than this price. I think it's like half, but they didn't move today. But I'm not quite sure what the affiliation is between QEDN and GEGI. So you may want to check that out. Uh, GM Sachi Inchi Beverage is the only beverage in the world with omega-3, 6, and 9, a complete vegan protein, and all nine essential amino acids. The only real superfood ready to drink. We are currently producing Sachi Inchi Beverage, Sachi Inchi Siege, and Sachi Inchi Powder. <laughs> Sachi Inchi, do I have to say that again? Uncooked or not cooked properly can be a health hazard, and it also has a horrible, bitter taste. GM Sachi is working with Tetra Pak to pack GM Sachi Inch Beverage into their innovative packaging. Tetra Pak has been working closely with GMS to pack GMS Sachi Inchi Beverages into recycled materials made with sugar cane. Quite interesting, eh? Now, I had mentioned, but I didn't read it in the news press, that this company just made deals with Nestle and Juan Valdez, and they're probably going to make more. They just left, I think two days ago, the largest annual food event serving one of the fastest growing sectors in the world, food. It is valued at over $5 trillion globally right now. Do you know that America eats a billion dollars worth of snacks after dinner a week? <laughs> $52 billion market. Unbelievable. So $5 trillion for food isn't that outrageous, is it?
They've got a YouTube out there of them being at the Golf Food 2022 Dubai meeting or whatever you want to call it, Expo. The biggest in the world and we expect a lot of contracts to be coming out of that and that may be one of the reasons why it's running right now. And this is that uh, special package that Tetra's making for them. It's made out of sugar cane. Just thought you might want to see it. Let's go take a look at that other news. The next piece of news came out. Uh, this one was on the 30th. This is the last piece of news they had. We don't even get one for this year. GM Saatchi Inchi and the both companies obtained the first approval from INVIMA in Vima for the GM Saatchi Inchi beverage. INVA is the Colombian Institute of Food and Medicine. INVIMA works together with FDA to approve food and medicine for humans. With this approval, we can export to the USA, Canada, and other countries. So that is basically it, folks. There isn't a whole lot more to say. She rose today because she's got value, but not because she's got catalysts. So let's go take a look at that chart. That is QEDN, six month, four hour chart. Way back here in July, we had a high of 0048. We're at half that. We're at half that right now at 0024, right on the money. Hit a low bubble here of 0013. And from here to here, that was a 100% gain. So that gives you an idea of what these other bounces are about. So she came down through the 200 all the way down to that low bubble and this is when the 200 haul which is very much like the 200 but that's 200 days just simple. This is 200 days with more credence being given to current affairs. So you can see we are just about ready to start turning up and the price is following it. The price is following the 200 haul. Now we've got the 200 haul and the 200 coming together. Actually all the lines are right there. Now what I want you to see here is while she was fighting, trying to get above the 200 here, our MACD was falling and we were into the red zone. She didn't have any power. Now she's trying to fight to get above it. You can see she's pushing even higher, but our MACD is going up as is our RSI. So she, there is a stronger likelihood now of her getting above that 200 and starting to climb like she was doing back there. So let's come in on the 20 day, one hour. All right, I'm going to fill in all that blank spot with the Heiken Ashi bar right there. Makes it easier to see, right? You can actually see trends a little easier here. So we are looking at the 20 day. She is trying to stay near the 200, getting above it and falling away. And then she fell far away, came right back to it. You can see she has a habit. She wants to go home to the 200, fell and back up again. Now she's at that same point. Now, as she looks to me following repetitious pattern, she could easily come back down here again. But this is a lower low than this. You have higher lows going up the chart now right from here to here we're going uphill so we're getting higher lows and is that a higher high that is the same going across there so oh that didn't work in either case I would anticipate this to probably come down I would think this might come down a little bit higher it'll come down hitting this line somewhere up in this area that would be your buy-in point. You're gonna wait for this to roll back down because where is it gonna go once it comes down to this zone? Eight out of 10 chance, it'll stay right on this line. So it'll bounce back up to that 200 and maybe even push up higher. That's what you normally get are higher lows and higher highs because she starts going in a channel up. So wait for this to fall. I'm sure it probably will down into this region of about uh, 0019, somewhere around there and wait for that and then ride it back up. Nobody says you have to stick in. You get a gain, take your gain. Wait for it to drop again and do it again. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look at that third stock. And the last one we're looking at, but definitely not the least, this is RPNRF, Rapid Nutrition. Finished today at 25 cents, 316% gains. 
She's on the QB tier, that is the middle tier of the OTC market. This is the better tier. You have to audit your financials to get here. So they're more transparent. Pinks, they can just give us numbers and we got to take their word for it. Not so with the QB. More trustworthy. So what does this company do? Well, they distribute well-being products, nutritional products, products that help your immunity, products for dieting, and they've been doing this since 2001. And they've basically got three, four products that they work with all around the world. And I'll show you more about the company here in a minute. Now, the company had a great day today, no doubt about it, 316%, but there's no news today. There's no tweets today. There was no filings today. In other words, there is no catalyst. I, I looked, I looked and I could not find a reason why she ran. Now there's a lot of good things going on, but uh, why it kicked today, I don't know. But I'll share with you what I found. So what was the relative volume around this company today? She went from 10,000 shares to 150,000. We still aren't even in the millions yet and we had 316% gains. That is about 14 times her normal volume. What is the share structure on this? Whew. Well, at least we're out of the billions. 44 million, we'll call it 45. Just under 50 million. Not a super low float, but relatively speaking, not bad, not bad at all. So what are her financials? Well, that's a little old, 2018, 2019. Let's check quarterly. Oh, well, that's surprising. I mean, they really seem to be in a lot of the world. Now, this is an Australian company. That F on the back means foreign. And I find with a lot of Canadian companies that they file in their own country. And that information doesn't get carried all the way over here onto the OTC markets. So, because this isn't an SEC stock, it's really an Australian stock, that's probably why. So we'd have to look over there because I know they've got to be making money. So let's go take a look at that news. Now, this news goes all the way back to August of last year, and we're just looking at the headlines. Uh, they expanded their distribution into Africa in September. They're working on global markets, online strategy, concentrating on that worldwide demand. They're expanding their flagship brand in new Saudi Arabia. They got a distribution agreement in there. They are distributing it throughout South Korea. They got a partner over in South Korea to set up a division. And they got a new analytical guy, this uh, Zephyrin Group. These are like a third party that will look at the company from an unbiased position and tell the actual value, what the company's worth. And they put that out there. But that came out on the 15th. Today is the 17th. So that was two days ago. Now, we're going to take a look over here at their PDF, it's their presentation of the company, so you know what they've got. This is their Lisa Secret product. It's a product they've had since 2001, 2005. They finally finished all the R&D on it and started distributing it throughout Australia. Then they started adding other products. You've got your LS products here, which is also a dietary. Both of these are for dieting, but this one is more about your immune system while you're keeping your weight under control. And there's the bars, the powders, the shakes, and all that sort of stuff. They've also got a third product that they just came out with has a patent on it called Azarine. Uh, this is an antioxidant. It helps protect your body from the damaging effects of free radicals and oxygen. I never thought of oxygen as being dangerous. So they've got those three products. And just so you have a quick look here, you can see that once they got the R&D completed for the Lisa product in 2005, they secured deals in Ireland and the Middle East. They incorporated in the UK in 2012. Then they got a super large distributor in Australia. He got them into their health food stores, into the supermarkets. They got export rights to get the stuff out of the country. So everything was kicking. They got onto the QB in 2019. 2020, they started dis distributing their products in Switzerland, Italy, France, Jamaica. See, there's lots of other countries. And one of those pieces of news that we didn't read actually says that they have now expanded into Europe, America, and Asia. So, I mean, where, where aren't they is going to be the question. So, we know they've got money. Speaking of money, I do believe right down here at the very bottom, oh, and before we get there, of course, all their products have got the science 
to back them up. They're just not willy-nilly throwing products out there. These have been proven. They've gotten awards through the years. These same products we're talking about, they have awards. They've gotten their uh, certifications for global manufacturing, their GMPs from FDA. I mean, they're in good shape. So we really don't have anything to worry about them as quality products. And here we do get some revenue. Here we get to see that they were doing three to four million in 2020, 2019. I don't figure it's gotten any worse, not if they're expanding, expanding, expanding. And they're getting to keep about 50% of what they're making. So I've got to presume, and I'm sure we could find the financials if it's important to you, do your DD. That's something to check out because I didn't cover it all, did I? But we can go look at that chart. Let's go do that. Well, that is a six-month, four-hour chart for RPNRF, Rip Nerf. <laughs> Not a lot going on there. Now, remember, this stock only gets like 10,000 shares a day. Today, she did, what, 150,000. So, we don't normally get a lot of action on this stock. Now, there's 150,000 volume. You can see the bar. There was another one. Normally, she's doing 10,000 a day. So, you know, this isn't very much volume. It looks like it, but it's all relative really relative. We had a huge jump today, which is the only day you can speak of except this one. And what's most peculiar is that bar there. You see how big it is? And you see the full size of this bar, just the full? That is 300%. That is 300%. They're both 300% because this is more expensive. It takes a bigger bar to cover more area to cover that percentage. The less the price, the less the size of the bar, but the percentage is the same. So the gains were the same here. We hit a low bubble here, and I've got to think that is the catalyst. There's no news. There's no tweets. There are no filings. There's absolutely nothing. There was news two days ago, but I didn't think of that as catalyst news. And here you go. We got a low bubble. Let's come in on the, now this is going to get thin. Let's come in on the, oh boy, 20 day, one hour. Woo! All right, so we got a low bubble here at 002. But look, this is 20 days, but we got three days of trading in 20 days. That shows you how thinly. It isn't just 10,000 a day. It's just every other day she has 10,000 shares. So this may get another big bounce, but you may have to wait a few days for it, honestly. I mean, we can look at that on the backtrack, and you can see she's having a lot of trades, but that's a whole year. That is a whole year. That looks like three months of trades. So there isn't a lot of trading, let alone a lot of volume. So this thing could jump, but you could be waiting a while for it. She's got a lot of going on. She's in every country. You really should check out her most current uh, financial. We were looking at 2020. This is 2022 now, so there has got to be a whole year of growth there. That would be the most important piece of information right now, because if this stock starts to get some volume, it could easily start growing, no doubt about it. Isn't it funny how big gains sometimes come with no real cause? A low bubble. That's what I think made that jump, folks. Low bubbles on warrants, low bubbles on stocks that have value. Those are the big profit makers. Those are the ones you can see coming. Those are the dark clouds on the horizon. DD isn't always about news presses. There's a lot of DD just looking at the charts. Those bubbles tell you so, so much. Remember folks, DD is everywhere you look. It's everything you absorb and it's everything that can put money in your pocket. DD, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.